Today we are going to go over my top 10 list of game-changing technology for No Man's Sky. Now this is technology that you choose to purchase. It's not things that you are forced to get like the terrain manipulator, the base computer. This is survival, Bob. And most of this stuff is gonna be done right here in the anomaly, but there's a few outliers that are not. So let's jump in here and let me show you my top 10 list for the most game-changing technology. Number 10, this just became available early game with one of the last updates that we had. The Synthesis Laboratory that lets you get product recipes that previously you were only able to get by breaking into Sentinel facilities. So the first one on my list is the microprocessor, okay? And that may seem kind of boring to you guys, but microprocessors, you need them all the time. Being able to craft these things on your own with chromatic metal and carbon nanotubes in your inventory just makes the game so much quicker and easier so you don't have to keep going and buying them they're 19 grand a piece which really isn't that big a deal except early game so from now on i'm always going to run over here and buy the microprocessors just as soon as i can you purchase these for nanites here at the synthesis laboratory now for number nine we're going to talk to this guy over here with the spaceship technology and this is usually the first guy i hit up and that is going to be number nine comes in as the teleport receiver when you're running around and you're doing lots of things having the teleport receiver makes it so that you can get stuff out of your ship from a much further distance away it's not infinite it's not really even super big but it allows you to run around on a trade post and grab stuff out of your ship without having to ever worry about it and i spent a lot of time early game on a trade post having a teleport receiver installed in my ship just lets me move stuff around in my inventory so much easier and that's why it makes our list at number nine it's crafted with antimatter and wiring looms you are going to have to purchase the wiring looms i tell you what guys if wiring looms were a craftable item they would probably be number one on my list but unfortunately they are not so you're gonna have to buy those all right, and staying with this Starship upgrade guy, the number eight item on my list is the Cadmium Drive. The Cadmium Drive is the first hyperdrive upgrade that allows you to go to different colored systems, and it opens up the chain to get you to the Emerald Drive and the Indium Drive. The Cadmium Drive only requires chromatic metal, and then again, three wiring looms, which you'll need to purchase. Once you get the Indium Drive, however, you don't need the Cadmium Drive or Emerald Drive anymore because it unlocks this door and it gets you into the next type of solar system. The cadmium drive comes in at number eight on my list. Seven on my list is also in the ship upgrades and that is the positron ejector. Now, people are gonna have their choice on different weapons, but for me, the positron ejector not only is a great weapon for fighting, but it also allows you to collect items on planet very, very easily. So not only will it mine ferrite, carbon, dihydrogen, all the normal materials that you can mine with your mining beam, you also have a chance you can get the glowing crystals. Uh, I got lemium out of this and I got a storm crystal from a crystal from shooting the dihydrogen. You can collect so many resources so quick. It's not even funny. The positron ejector really changes the way I gather materials and mine, especially when you're building and you need a ton of ferrite dust. All right, number six on our list is storage. Your first storage cube is gonna be given to you after an hour and a half in the game from your base computer quest. Now you can buy additional storage at the construction research station over here, but the reality is for me, the storage is about getting a freighter. Once you get the freighter, it is gonna unlock all 10 storage units for you at no cost. You get that after your fifth warp and then you'll have access to 10 storage crates. Now, when you're in your freighter, it's not gonna show up in the freighter construction items here, but if you go to your advanced technology, you will see all 10 storage units here for your freighter, and you can put them all in your ship. This is huge. Those storage crates also correspond to the storage crates that we get from the construction research station. I put down all 10 of them. I will name them zero through 10. And by naming them a single number, you can click through them so much easier here because it shortens the tab. So you can start very early game with a freighter and have those 10 storage units. And then as you're able to add these other storage units with very technology or following through the quest line, then you'll be able to match them up and use them at different bases. Storage is number six on the top 10 game-changing technologies in No Man's Sky. Back in the construction research module for number five, and that is going to be the nutrient processor. The nutrient processor for me is a game-changing technology for several reasons. The first reason is the extra storage. This gives you 25 extra slots to store things in there. Anything 
from that is highlighted over here carbon condensed carbon chromatic metal larval cores of course any of the food items uh, can be put in here and stored the nutrient processor is going to allow you to have an extra backpack basically that you can carry around with you and plop down wherever you want and store a bunch of extra items now the other thing that it does is it allows you to make food items that you can then sell for nanites nanites is a big currency in this game so you're going to want to get as many nanites as you can and you can make these and put them everywhere and again the inventory is shared just like through the regular storage containers so i have one on my freighter i've got one at my base i've got one i carry around on me and i've got access to all of those food items that i can put in there whenever i want five on our list is the nutrient processor now we're getting up into the top Four, number four on my list is the economy scanner. The economy scanner is the second thing I buy in game because first I gotta get the teleport receiver, then I'm gonna get the economy scanner. The economy scanner, as you can see, is built with five microprocessors. Good thing we learned that already and a wiring loom. The economy scanner is going to let you go into space, look at the galaxy map and figure out if you're going to a one, two or three star economy. You want to go to three-star economies very often because they're going to sell more materials. They're going to have a higher chance of spawning an S-Class ship, and they are generally where people want to be in the wealthier economies. The other thing an economy scanner will allow you to do is scan in space and find a trade post whenever you want to. And that is truly game-changing, especially early on in No Man's Sky. So, number three is going to be the Matter Beam. As soon as you get your freighter, you want to go get a matter beam. The matter beam allows you to take things in and out of your storage in your freighter from any solar system. It, you don't even have to be near it. It just lets you teleport it instantly to you. It's amazing. So you get the matter beam in the upgrade console on the deck of your freighter. You would go to purchase upgrades and you purchase the matter beam. You're going to need five salvaged frigate data it requires five antimatter three magnetic resonators and the wiring looms the best way to get that is by being a pirate and shooting up the system ships that you see in the area they will have items in their holds it will tell you what those items are when you get close enough and point at them you don't have to deal with some guys shooting back at you and they're not going to be happy about it but it will not affect your rank as long as you don't shoot the smaller ones and the pods that are floating so the matter beam is comes in at number three. It really is a game changer for me. And I'm always excited whenever I get that matter beam. Number two on my list, we are back in the construction research station. Number two is going to be the medium refiner. The medium refiner is made with 100 magnetized ferrite and five dihydrogen jelly. Very easy stuff to make. But the medium refiner allows you to put two materials together for the first time. All the other refiners up to this point have only allowed you to make one item into a different item. This allows you to mix items to make a different item, or it allows you to expand items by adding oxygen or something like that. It, it really changes the way the game is played. That's why I always come to the anomaly for the first time with 10 salvage data, because that's what it takes to get it. Now the large refiner is great too, but by the time you get the large refiner, you've already got the medium refiner. And quite frankly, I don't do that much stuff that requires three slots. But as far as game changing goes, the medium refiner makes the game completely different because it allows me to make so much money. It allows me to expand resources. It allows me to do just all kinds of stuff. And the really cool thing about the medium refiner, it doesn't require power. You can just slap it down wherever you want and start refining. It's a great thing to have. All right, and let's see if you guessed what the number one game-changing technology for No Man's Sky is in 2022. And for me, it will always be the personal refiner personal refiner is truly game changing. While you're running around and doing things, you can access your personal refiner right here in your backpack and you can refine runaway mold into nanites from all that goop you've picked up. I can take the limium and the different types of alloys that you get in the game and you can take these, stick them in your personal refiner, turn something worth 25,000 into something worth 44,000. I can't tell you how many times this has gotten me out of a jam when I'm somewhere and I don't, I run out of carbon, slap some oxygen in this thing, make some carbon real quick. But it makes you so much more efficient because you're able to refine things while you're doing other things. And I'm all about efficiency. So for me, the personal refiner is number one. 
tell me what did you think about this top 10 list what did i miss what's your top 10 look like what would you have done differently i'd love to hear it if you like these top 10 lists make sure you give the video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to survival bob i've got several ideas from more of these that i'd like to put out there and i'd love the feedback from you guys so remember if you're going to be a bob have fun with it and uh, if you're going to play no man's sky make sure you get some cool technology it makes the game a lot more fun we'll see you next time guys take care